Davis, who likes to play so heavily around Stark in the top side of the map where most teams are playing around bottom lane. And, you know, that has been more uh, kind of the style that Flash Wolves is bringing out. And you guys talked about Graves. Flash Wolves, <laughs> they watched the games and said, I want to know what should we ban here. Oh, wait a minute. That guy just solo carried on Graves two games in a row. It is now removed, of course. Eugene was so fantastic on it. They're in the play-ins uh, for Flash Wolves, though. The fact that they also will actually rely a lot now on Betty means they actually fit kind of the style of a lot of the other teams uh, coming into this tournament where the bot lane is where you really want to focus your attention. And let's see if they can get him a good matchup. I'm excited to see if Evo's style can surprise or catch people off guard because if five of the six teams are trending towards this meta style of AD carries, maybe Stark and Yijin can pull off some surprises and this is the first of many battles where they can prove it. It could also be very interesting to see if any of the teams want to adapt their style to try to counteract what Evos is doing because while it was effective for, for a lot of their split to play so heavily through Stark, it's, it's so obvious often what they are doing because they are constantly going back up to the top side. Uh, that you can sometimes be there to counter gank, be there to turn that around. But we also did see Stark, you know, playing tanks, uh, being yeah. able to be a bit more flexible and, and kind of them playing a bit more through slay. See, I don't think a lot of teams will first pick Kha'Zix right now. <laughs> uh, but we're seeing it right here after we saw the Graves ban coming in from Flash Wolves. And I think it's Evo simply saying, we believe Yujin is going to be our big carry. He is going to be the one who needs to snowball. Kha'Zix is one of the picks you can do it on as an assassin jungler on his side. And it's a lot invested with the first pick going towards him. And of course on the counter, it is the Varus locked in, something that we've talked quite a lot about and saw, uh, you know, sparingly over the last few weeks, but with Kaiser removed from the table, gonna lock in that Varus. I mean, Varus does have very strong crowd control, has an incredibly strong one item power spike, all the Rage Blade users oh, generally yeah. do, uh, and can lane up well against uh, almost every single AD carry. So I think there's a lot of consistency and a lot of strength in these first two picks. And I really like that Varus is one of the best AD carries to play around. If you want to actually gank a lane, give him level 6. He has a, a CC ultimate that can lock down more than even just one member. And it's so easy with his burst damage coming in as well yeah. to just secure these kills. So it's a great pick for Betty. He's played it a ton during the split. And it also will allow Sword Art, if they get ahead, to start roaming. And that's going to be one of the big stories for us to follow in this game. This gangplank would be very nice though here for Hanabi. It was actually his second most played throughout the split. Stark. Uh, going back to a tank. You're right there could be some crazy flex, but we're expecting Orin to go topside. We're not expecting then Stark to be on a carry. And and I just think that GP is so incredibly strong into those tank matchups. Yeah, uh, you can play it a little bit more for laning with grass, or you can simply go for Klepto and, and farm off of them. And then you shoot that ulti down to the bottom lane again, yep. and Betty once again gets an advantage on his side. I think Evos could try and punish the gangplank top lane. Like Orin is fairly effective at setting up tower dives and Kha'Zix's damage will be very important there, but it's not easy to execute for, for Evos. And you can already see how incredibly strong the level 6 of Flash Wolves is here. When you're looking at that bottom side, when you're talking about the Chains of Corruption, you have the Skarner ultimate, GP ultimate drops that down, you get slowed up, you get Skarner ulted, you get Varus ulted, that is ridiculously powerful, especially if Flash Wolves wants to draft something like a support with CC, a playmaker for Sword Art, who has been so good on them. Well, what does Maple want to drop? We talked a lot about the top and the bottom lane. Rise is already locked in for Warzone. I'm seeing Karma, Azir taken off the table. Where else does he go? Hmm, that's going to be a good question if you want something where he can roam down towards bot lane as well. Uh, and just as we highlight that, he hovers the Talia at least. Was nerfed a little bit more coming into this, but I think some mid laners will still feel okay playing her. You just need to remind yourself that you're not playing for your own lane. You're very much playing just to roam and be important in other lanes. And that's what really every pick is saying for the flash yeah. So it makes, bot lane, bot lane, it bot makes lane. a lot of sense. And and they're kind of challenging Evos here and Yijin in particular to be able to adapt their play style to that, to be able to match the pressure in the bottom side. And Tom Kench, I think, is a fantastic support to pick against this sort of style. When you have all these heavy CC level six ultimates, Tom Kench can, can save you from that. But sadly, then Tom Kench cannot stop you from perma pushing you under the turret. Morgana, if she gets locked in, clicks W on the wave. Varus has two abilities that can kill the minions as well. And then you can just perma shove this lane into the turret. And if you ever get ganked, there's going to be Talia flying down. There's going to be GP ultis coming in. Like, Flash rules, it's not about Mabel. There's no Kasa anymore. It's about the bot lane winning. And this draft is literally screaming, we want our bot lane to win.
What do we think of the Cogmore pick into that? Because while the top so is so great, it's like, I got okay, it. right. <laughs> I just get nervous when I see that low mobility, no escape ADC into this type of draft. So it's risky. It is. And, and what I will say is I think it's high risk, high reward because there is not really a true pure tank on Flash Wolf's team. Yes, there is a Scarter, but generally speaking, it's not going to be ultra yeah. tanky. If you can protect the Kog'Maw with this Orn, with this Tom Kench in front of him, he can shred through most of the members there on Flash Wolves, but it's going to be down to Yijin, creating pressure with this early Kha'Zix pick, yep. you know, getting his tanks ahead, especially if you can pick on that Gangplank on the top side of the map, get your Orn ahead. That's the engage you need. That's the front line that can enable this Kog'Maw to take over. And if he wants to go mid lane, there should be a cleanse from Mabel. He's sitting on it right now, and I believe it's going to be the same when he loads into the game. Just make it a little bit harder, but that could be the other one. Like Generally, you want to gank solo laners as a Kha'Zix, and when you first pick this jungler for him, you're very much setting him up to succeed, but can he do it alone against what is a very well-built composition from Flash Wolves? that is setting Betty up to carry. Oh, which direction does Yijin go? What lane, what what plays can Yijin make? Because against Supermassive, he was there. He was able to respond and was able to show up. Just earlier this week, EVOS and Flash Wolves eliminated Supermassive and Gambit, respectively. Now we get to see them face off at least twice here in the group stage of MSI. And it is the final of that uh, play-ins, is what we'll call it. Could be a draw, could split 1-1. You're an EU after all, you know how we love our ties. Yeah, it's really unfair when you think about the tournament back. format, you know? It is two games in the group stage. EU yes. is the only people that have practiced those BO2s. Exactly. I talked about those plays, by the way. We should take a look at the, uh, the, the kills per minute and kills per game. 16 during the play-in series and 14.3. I don't know if it's going to be quite as dramatic today, though I do hope that it will be. It all depends on their jungler in this game. I think they want to play that way. They're used to playing with a lot of fights because they get forced on you in, in, in Vietnam. You don't have a choice. You can't just sit and play super slow in that region. So they're used to going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but I think Flash Wolves on their side, like they have some of the picks that can challenge in early skirmishes. And also they have been playing a split in the LMS where there's been a lot of Korean imports coming in. There's been a lot of other teams trying to challenge in terms of just pure mechanics. And that's kind of what what EVOS is going to bring in this game here. And Flash Wolves really has, has kind of stood the test of time in their region. You know, AHQ has been gone and oh. oh, Ron OP. Oh, definitely not the most OP of moves. Summoner Heal already used Flash Blown. But he could run that, away. That lane was going to be difficult already, and now it gets even more difficult. But we're not done yet. Well, we're going to talk about that's a lot of combined kills per minute setting up for potential. That's finally, finally, Mooja's going to back away. Yeah, Mujin will back away, and it's kind of funny because it ends up actually putting Mujin a little bit behind the Kha'Zix because he's going to start, you know, Leashless Blue, and yes, of course, a Skarner can do that, no problem, but we'll be a little bit behind. The, the bottom lane, though, is the beneficiaries of this. This is a flashless Tom Kench that you can maybe look to pressure a bit harder. I want to bring us back to that Flash Wolves point we're talking about. Um, talking about Flash Wolves, they've dominated their region. They lost Kha'Sa. Kha'Sa sort of the big history, but look at these stats, guys. First in gold of 15, highest Drake percentage, highest Baron percentage, largest time with the major lead. It's it's insane how dominant this team has been for how long. Yeah, it's it's just crazy that they can always do it. Uh, let's see what happens around here. Eugene is very low. Oh, oh we're gonna force the flash. All right, but that was the guy we were talking about needed to snowball and get really far ahead. That's obviously not a good start. Maybe just finds him. But going back to that point about, you know, Flash Wolves dominating in the LMS, like a lot of the teams have made changes back in that region. Like HQ is effectively gone at the moment, not even getting to the final as we've seen so often in the past. And the fact that Flash Wolves have been able to keep at least two members of the old core in Sword Art and Maple, is huge for them to just create the stable environment for some of the newer players to step up. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, the landscape of, of the LMS is changing, right? You know, you mentioned ASQ uh, kind of falling off, but J Team did not have a strong year. It was G Rex and, and Flash Wolves essentially at the top. And despite the fact that Flash Wolves has a couple of these rookies on their team, they're able to perform. They're able to dominate their region again. Those statistics are by far the best in the tournament. Yes. But the question has to become can you put on that kind of a show against the top teams from the rest of the world? And that's what they are looking to prove here. Well, we're going to have to find out because, because the last time we saw Flash Wolves internationally, they went 1-5 in five and uh, World Group Stage last year. It was a very disappointing performance. And as it stands, some shenanigans in the early game is uh, not really resulting in the whole lot yet. But this is where Yijin starts to, to wake up, got access to at least his core abilities. And he's a bit of a crazy jungler. Yeah, he's... 
He's affecting the guy you look at. Uh, before it was Levi with Gigabyte Marines. SOFM has also been one of the famous junglers coming for, from that region. But Yuji specifically, I think, is uh, he's not as smart in the way he plays. He's just extremely aggressive and he's just mechanically very gifted. So he knows when he can take a fight and win it. But he oftentimes can show up kind of randomly. You know, like, oh, here you should be bot lane and doing something. No, nah, no, nah, he's top lane fighting the enemy jungler. And it is a very risky play style, but if it works, then he takes over the game. The best part is, they can't know where you're going to be if you don't know where and you're going to be. That's the key, man. You can't kind of game mid lane. I mean, look at this. Like, I, mean, I know CSD is a bit of an awkward one, but plus 29 from uh, the, the playing stages. Pretty impressive um, yeah. stats here. And, and Mujin's going to have to try and figure out, like, how, how do you predict, how do you anticipate what Yujin can do when Kha'Zix can be anywhere once he gets that stealth, once he gets the ability to leap, the jungles are going to at least see each other for now. Yeah, and, and losing the early flash honestly does hurt him so much because it makes it so terrifying to sort of kind of run into the Skarner. And, you know, Flash Wolves wants to essentially have a no-action game until 6. Yep. Once you have your ultimates, you're going to feel so good to fight. So the fact that they force those early flashes, you may say, oh, well, that's not a kill, it's not that big of a deal. That actually completely dismantled the early game. And you can see how uh, Yijin's under pressure. And what? Whoa! What was that? Hey, I said it was random stuff happening from Yijin. He never left. He had like one HP. It was he like... was being killed by the chickens and then donated it to I Yijin. I mean, Smite was all, oh, no. almost ready. I thought he was going to use it, but now bot lane. Well, take a look at the crystal slashes. Manages to get a two-man stun. Devour comes out by Rano B, but it simply does not matter. Seismic shove! Manages to pick up the kill, and that's two more for Flash Wolves. Hey, you sailed, uh, I thought you said level six. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> turns <laughs> turns, out, kidding, turns out, uh, you don't need level six. No, you don't, when the enemy jungler is effectively killing himself yeah. on the Raptor camp, and you are standing right next to him as a jungler. You walk in, you kill him, and that set up the easiest roam to the bottom lane. This was not supposed to happen. It's it's 100% correct. Wait for level six, normally with Talia, Skarnar, I mean, just got gifted he, three he kills. Is, he is flashless. He sees the opposing jungler there. Uh, he is down about 10% HP, decides not to retreat. And then look at the flash. Still not back up here for Ron OP from the start, so no chance of escaping from him. And just a beautiful roam down from Maple gets them a massive lead. A six minute 2K plus lead for them. And they didn't even have to expend the ultimates. They weren't even at level <laughs> yeah. six. When they hit level six now, that were, those repeat ganks become that much easier. Well, Stark's gonna find himself under some pressure. Very big minion wave to contest with. Already flashing forward. Take a look at the minimap. Maple's making his way up. Stark has already used four of the Forge God and another kill donated to Maple. So another roam from Flash Wolves. They get another kill. And just to make it even worse, Whenever we see them get kills, they also manage to get flashes. That now makes it even easier. You have Suna Virus ulti. That's a very easy skill shot to land on a no-flash target. You're gonna have Mabel coming down behind them with walls, Skana ultis, like... No flashes makes it just impossible to survive the next few ganks, and you've already died when you had the flash. And that's why it's so important to be able to analyze those situations and say, okay, yep, I'm dead. Like, that sucks, <laughs> yeah. but you, there's no getting out of this except your death. Move on, have your flash, because those repeat ganks become so ridiculously powerful. And luckily, though, uh, for Evos, at least the flash is up for Ron OP, and because he's running Spellbook, he swapped over to Cleanse. So Ooh. he can essentially be the QSS and flash <laughs> for Slay, because he can, he can, you know, flash him out of there. Zayl, I believed you. I believed you so well. The, the glass is half full, and there's always a silver yeah. lining. There you go. But the team is still down. They need two and a half thousand gold at seven minutes. Let's see how uh, useful that flash cleanse can be for Ron OP when the engage happens. Because uh, flash walls, they're definitely looking comfortable already. Saying it's useful is not the same thing as saying it's enough. <laughs> Touché. Touché. <laughs> so, Touché. Let's just, just going on the record with that. But I accept. I apologize. Yeah. I, 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 I made fun of you too quickly. Yeah, that's okay. All right, all right. Let's see if Yijin can do anything. Rough start to the game. It's fair to say Mujin has been part of every kill in the side of flash walls. And one of them was, of course, on the Kha'Zix itself, which set up the next dive. So where would he go? Uh, where would he go right now? Uh, let's see if he can do anything mid. No, that's flash and cleanse. That's not going to happen. I think you still have to look top. GP doesn't have his ultimate. Orin can set up dives, I think, fairly well. Yep. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, uh, but I do think that is really the only 
kind of option that he has right now is trying to set up some sort of a dive on this GP, you know, try to utilize that to get pressure in the top side and then look for Stark to make a play with his teleport elsewhere on the map. And, and you have okay. to look kind of a couple steps ahead. Right, and, and normally as a classic, it's not bad if you're just farming and, and getting fairly strong towards the mid game when you can be really good at, at abusing people in side lanes, but he's forced to try and do something because his team is just getting destroyed at the moment, and he's top as ale. There we go, Fall of the Forge God comes out, nice flash line. away by Hanabi, you can get a jump in with Taste of Fear, not enough damage yet, looking to reset the tower aggro, going underneath, that's the first one secured, and Stark will just escape with his life. All right, right there, we saw Mabel and Mujin move down to the bottom side, and Evo's bot lane, very smart, they just backed away, and said they're doing it again, run OP and slay, it's important to you, just staying safe, because they need to get some gold here, and it's going to be top lane turret. They could, yeah, they can trade for that, because this is no TP on Hanabi. He could drop his ultimate to try to clear some of those waves, but the turret is likely going down. Uh, we'll see if they are able to actually stay around and finish it. I mean, GP open might be enough. Oh, it's gone. Tower first blood picked up by Flash Wolves as well. Oh, oh. And the tower doesn't even die in the top lane. GP nice. ulti too strong right here. Mabel fighting in the mid lane as well. Blood was on. Oh! He's gonna go in. Fine. Does he take the realm up? Yes, he does! Into the room prison, the cleanse comes out! So no! far, not enough! No! Otto's not gonna kill either! Warzone and Mabel trading blow for blow, but Mabel kept his teeth. Still a great play from Warzone in the mid lane there, trying to get that kill. It will force Mabel back. Sadly for Warzone, he might get ganked now. All right, he's got no flash, he's got no heal. He's got Rado no peace here. Rado P, he's got flash and cleanse though. Not gonna jump in for the save. Instead, he's like, sorry, bro, your fault. And he lets Warzone die. Learn from earlier. Don't waste your flash. The guy's already <laughs> yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah, even, even if you eat them up, there's so much CC available. Morgana ultimate, Skarner ultimate, everything is still there. So just a nice play from Betty. Good roam up and, and going to be able to punish. Uh, ten minute uh, Luton's Echo for Maple. That's going to hurt a lot uh, for anybody on the side of Evos. What about ten minute Rage Blade? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's actually way worse, I think. Yeah. Uh, plus 20 CS, Tower First Blood. Right. Uh, Maple hits, I think, all five of those threaded volleys. Slay so uses stamina heal. Seismic Shove will force the flash. And Maple going to be very happy with his uh, with his bottom lane and how this actual this whole game is played out. 4,000 gold away. And someone's going to have to call Peter. This is some uh, abuse on, on the <laughs> bottom side of the map here. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to set some expectations now, by the way, gentlemen. The largest gold lead uh, from the playing stage was Supermassive versus Kaboom. It was 8.7 thousand gold at 15 minutes. We'll see whether or not Flash Wolves can extend. They're currently at 4,200 up. They got four minutes to try to break that record. Well, the good thing here for Evos is the fact that uh, the main ulti is on cooldown from Flash Rolls. So they got a good 30 seconds to at least not having to fear the GP and the virus ult. However, there is a Flash engage from Ascana, and there is currently no Flash from Warson in the mid lane. He will soon be the target if he stays around, and Flash Rolls can push in now for this turret. And I think Flash Wolves is playing this so intelligently. Don't leave Hanabi in a side lane when he has no Flash, when he has no ult, when he is vulnerable to be your peak gank. Instead, they just group up and, and siege down a turret. So that is their one weakness right now, and it, it can't be exploited. And again, this is a very standard Flash Wolves kind of game where we talked about this in Champions League. It's all about the bot lane. Get them fed. Oh, he's going. Yeah, there we go. Flash uh, into Impale. Please continue. Standard uh, yeah, yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. So get the bot lane rolling. You can leave the top lane alone. He did. Of course, die once, but the turret is still alive due to the GP ult. And the fact that Betty is now on this early rage play, Mabel's been getting a ton of kills on the it, it's just absolutely perfect for them. They should be able to get the Rift Herald. And I don't think Evos can do absolutely anything. Oh, they're trying though. Yeah, let's take a look. Yijin looking for Betty and Sword Art. Slay's coming in with the help of a teleport by Stark. Now, Mabel is in the river already, and that's just gone horribly wrong. Yijin is killed before he can get into the fight. Rift Herald is picked up. On the back end of that, and Hanabi will bounce those barrels to push this wave in even further. Yeah, I mean, that's a rough one, but uh, they're, they're trying to play to win. They're, they know they're so far behind. They know they need to make a play. It didn't work, though. Mujin is coming in from behind with the flank here. Oh, some damage going down. Stark's not going to find the charge, though. 6,000 gold up off Flash Wolves. Two minutes to go before they can break that record of the largest gold lead in MSI 2018. The tower will not fall. But yeah, just such a difficult situation. The proactive plays, yes, they can work, and yes, I applaud the effort, 
Yeah. But not when you're 6k down, not when it's, it takes that long to get your teammates in. It's, it's tough though, you know, the execution definitely wasn't there, but when you are this far behind, when you are progressively getting more and more behind, you need to make a risky play because the game is, is already kind of getting out of hand. They, yeah. they do try to go for it there, but, uh, you know, the coordination a bit off, you know, Stark kind of needed probably to be the one to start that up, but when you're TPing not behind them, but in their face, it's, it's very easy to kind of retreat to this warded area in the river, uh, this big pocket of safety that they had, and Flash Holes is honestly just kind of checking all the boxes and yeah. playing a very well-coordinated game. They know where they could be weak, they know where they could be vulnerable, and they play around it. Hey, Trevor, you asked, could Flash Wolves match the early game? Could they get the vision down to spot where Evos would be roaming? The answer was yes, they could. Resoundingly. Yeah, they have full control of this game here. Of course, there's been some mistakes they've been able to punish, but uh, they're also setting it up correctly. And the only thing I'm kind of looking at is it can Stark get together with his team and use ulti while there's still some flashes on cooldown from some of the squishy members on the side of Flash Wolves. If he can't do that and he's just sitting side lane for the next few minutes, it gets almost impossible for them to yeah. actually start a fight because you can just flash away from the Orn. And then Flash Wolves will just have way more damage on their side. And to your point, I mean, if you, can, if you can get a pick right at the start of a fight, you have a chance to then win that fight. But it, it is very, very hard. And, yeah. you know, top lane turret is going to go down. They still have the Rift Herald in their back pocket. They can actually drop that to look pressure, you know, at tier two. Uh, and they are just amassing this enormous lead to the point where even if you do get that one pick, you're, you're not even necessarily more gold on the, on the playing field. And this, of course, just gives Flash Wolves this margin of error where they, they can sit back, even if they pick an over-eager fight. Uh, they've just got such a gigantic lead. I mean, Rageblade was just picked up by Slay. Uh, Hanabi, I think, got a 13 and a half minute Trinity Force. There's already the haunting guys for Maple. And you can see Maple and Betty. Let's look for the Dark Binding. It's going to connect there onto Rano P. Uh, the Chain of Corruption, rather, that's what Oh, he can't get to him! And, of course, the wall locks off Slay. He's got no flash available. Rono P was locked behind the uh, tower. Exactly. He was so close, but then because of the turret, he, it would take too long for him to walk around. And Slay's flash still on cool, and for a few more seconds, Maple and Flash will secure another kill. 5-0 to Leah. Yijin is to the side. But oh, they're all together. You do. I mean, look, Rift Herald on the inner turret in the mid lane. Flash Wolves are going to take their fourth tower of the game. Extend the goal lead to 8,000. I think it was six and a half ish at 15. I get the exact figure. But this is just obliteration. Yeah, I mean, they're just looking on another level right now than Evos. And, you know, Flash Wolves, uh, it's interesting because there has been more struggles for them kind of in recent years than in the past. You know, they didn't have a great world showing the last two years. But uh, they want to show that they are on the tier of North America and Europe and China and these other top regions and top teams. And they're looking to kind of start this tournament off with this statement game that they are not, you know, kind of to be to be paired with Evos. They're looking yeah. so much better. And this, of course, is the must win game for them if they want to go and fight for, for top four because you have to take down the other team coming from the play. And it's the same thing will be, you know, the case for Fnatic and Team Liquid. You know there's going to be some very tough games you're going to play against Kingzone and against RNG, so you have to get wins against some of these teams that might be a little bit under you. Uh, let's see what happens here. Sword Art, uh, Black Shields himself and walks out. Just the playmaking from Sword Art, you know, just, just really exceptional usage there of the Morgana E. All right, Realm Warp is going to get used. Who's going to step inside? Stark and Yijin. Looking for some targets. The GP ult is doing work as Stark is forced to run away. So is the rest of the team. The Devourer's bought enough time that nobody's died yet. Hanabi. But here comes Hanabi looking for the Powder Kick. He's got one and two. Not going to fight that one. Small mistiming. We'll let it slide as Ron OP gets eaten up. Yet another kill for Maple, 6-0-1. You hate to see that, but when you're this far ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, we'll let it go. To be fair, when you're not, you know, that far into the game, sometimes these barrels can be a little bit slow. And it's true, you think it's later than it yeah, actually and is. And your combo, it doesn't look as great anymore. Just line up the three and shoot them. I can confirm for you, by the way, the gold lead for Flash Will, 6,234. So not Whoa. better. Not bad. Didn't set a record for the play -in. gold lead, but still, um, that's disappointing. Pretty impressive, you know. But I want to turn the attention a little bit to Evos because obviously we praised Flash Wolves a lot. We knew we knew Evos were going to be an interesting team to watch. Um, definitely a very aggressive one. 
And we'll get to that story off in a moment because this play just didn't work out. Yeah, and honestly, when the Ornall doesn't give you much there, I think this next engage is is, is very optimistic. Like you're you're not likely going to be able to, to find a winning fight uh, unless you have a huge Ornalty, and they're not going to even have that available. So they look for a play, they try to make something happen, but Betty's staying safe in the back, Maple's staying safe in the back. They put out too much damage. Yeah, and what we see in this game is kind of the concern we had, of course, with Evos going into the group stages here. This aggressive play style where they try and force a lot of crazy picks around Yijin specifically, and it's a little bit all over the place. It's not always planned out, or there's not a lot of focus on the vision control you place down to make sure that this is the correct play. It's just if it backfires early on, you just fall so far down, and then your team doesn't really bring anything to the table to get back in the game, and that's kind of the problem for them here. If we can wait another 20, 30 minutes, sure, Slay can become a huge carry, but there's just no chance Flash Wolves will make it go that far. And it all started with Mujin just walking in, finding Yi Jin had lost his Flash, and just killed him at the Raptors, because well, he actually was basically killing himself uh, at that point. And then they went bot lane and got three kills. And this is, is kind of a fun graph for me. This is basically showing combined kills per minute. So essentially how bloody the games are from all the different regions. LPL traditionally talked about as the most bloody region compared to, you know, EU, NA, LCK, far on the left. Look at where the VCS is. <laughs> Almost double the kills per minute of the LCK. This is a very proactive region. As you said, Martin, they're not always, you know, putting out all the, the kind of pre-steps to that. They're not always preparing all the vision and making sure everything is very clean, but they do have very good mechanics and they look for these aggressive fights and yes. when you can pull them off, it looks amazing. It does indeed. Of course, I, the reason that graphic I think is very important in, in terms of this game is you can see the EVOS mentality and their play style. Within their region, they're not even one of the, the highest combined kill per minute teams. Uh, they're actually lower ranked. So this is slow by VCS standards. It's not working out as Rano P is going to use that cleanse that we talked so much about earlier. Well, the Impale comes out in this attempt kill for Flash Wolves. And one of the other things I want to step back and look at the big picture here. Both of these teams and, and leagues and regions originally were born in the GPL. You know, the LMS was removed from the GPL several years ago now. And only recently was Vietnam and the VCS pulled out of the GPL because of how consistently good they were at the game. Let's see what happens here, Trevor, uh, before we go further, because there might be a fight. There will be. There will be Stark trying to get a knockup. He manages to get shut down while he is shut down by Maple. Now, Flash Wolves, they were interrupted on the Baron. Mujin is looking for some sort of flank there. Trying to get the Crystal Slashes down. Slay's running for his life. Still only got that Rage Blade. It looks like he'll be able to escape for the time being. Yeah, and they have full control over mid lane. They're actually trying to track down Warzone here, who has no ultimate, so he's probably just dead to rights. It's it's only really a matter of time. Yeah, who's going to get the kill credit? That is the question! And Betty is the one that secures it. Again, just nicely done here from Flash Wolves, but you can see kind of the VCS mentality as far as when they fall behind, how do you get back into the game? Is it through playing side lanes? Is it through vision control? Is it through, you know, trying to stall and wave clear? No, they are looking for fights. Yeah. They are trusting in their mechanics to be able to come out on top, but Flash Wolves is really checking all the boxes to prevent that from happening. Okay, my Flash is down. Well, we'll group and wish mid. Yes. Okay, well, we could be flanked. Well, not anymore because everything is awarded, right? And, and Flash Wolves is really showing uh, kind of the foresight to kind of cover all those vulnerabilities that may be open. And it's good to see this big difference in the first game because I think all of us really want Flash Wolves to be very, very good. Mm -hmm. In this tournament here, it makes it so exciting then with all the, the fights for the top four spots and who can make it into the playoffs. And this start here, while it is currently against Evos who's getting absolutely destroyed, it's still hypes us up a lot more for what Flash Wolves can do in the next few games. And Evos will have to bounce back later today. And when you're down 112 for kills and 12,000 gold, yep. eh, it's pretty tough. Well, Evos will be playing Team Liquid later today. Oh, easy they, win then. They don't have a lot of time to bounce back, but and this is just one of those... Cars. But hold on, you make a joke there. This is one of those temperature check games where, you know, we said it's a play in final. How good is Flash Wolves? How good are Evos against one another? Well, we're getting a pretty clear answer. This game snowballed from some early game decisions. What if Evos don't have those mistakes? What if they go sure. a little bit more even, you know, until 15-20? You're going to have a bunch more games to find out the answer. Mujin actually not going to find the target with the Impale yet. Does so after a few moments later and Rondo Puma being flashed earlier. He gets taken out. And that's why it's so important to not read too, too much into this game. You can't underestimate teams. You know, if they do get ahead, if they have successful early game, they can snowball a game. They show the ability to do that against Supermassive. So teams are going to have to give them respect. 
uh, for Evo, so you have to worry about mentality when you're given a beating like this. All right, let's take a look. Call of the Forge God comes out. Baron is in the pit, secure it. Not with the smite, though. That got a little messy. Now Slay's coming in, trying to get the damage oh. down. Betty's the target. Slay flashed into the pit, but he's trying to fight three and get shut down. Maple was over the wall. Warzone will be the next to fall, and despite it looking momentarily, momentarily, okay. Flash will get Baron, only lose Betty, and there's still 13,000 gold up. But there were a few openings there, at least. And the Baron, of course, secured by Betty. Then the fight right after Slave. He could have picked up a bunch of kills for himself. Could have been something, but Flash will get the Baron here. And we should be looking at just another big push coming, giving them multiple in hips. And then they can actually close out the game right after. Let's see the fight once again. Remember, Rana is dead. So it is 4v5, and Baron. Let's drop down low, but of course no one is in there to actually try and steal it yet. Credit to Stark though, actually plays this fight incredibly well. He hits a three-man Ornal, then gets a three-man knocked up yep. with his pillar and charge combo there. You know, opening up a chance uh, for Slade to get something done in that fight. And you know, Slade did get the immediate shutdown onto Betty, but not really having enough damage, enough protection to be able to kind of follow up on that and, and finish off the rest of the kills. And, and I think there's a good chance Flash Wolves can just close the game on this Baron. They're so enormously ahead. Yeah, 13,000 gold, two Ocean Drakes, the Baron buff. Look at the item discrepancies between the lanes. For well, Flash Wolves now, it, it, it feels sort of just like a matter of time. And uh, definitely going to give us some more questions to watch because one thing that is clear, Evos have definitely shown that their commitment to their league's playstyle is true. Yeah. Regardless of winning or losing, Every game we've seen from Evos has been like that. And Mujin just going to threaten the Impale Engage, right? Inhibitor Tower falls. Inhibitor will be there after. And I'm just waiting for that team fight. Oh, there we go. And just to catch our war zone, Ron OP nowhere nearby. Uses the Devourer just to protect from Chain of Corruption. And Slay on the retreat. Two members of Evos are down. Flash Wolves now pushing onto the Nexus turret. For the Forge God. Yes, it catches Maple, but to what end? Now Slay managing to get some damage down thanks to that bioarcane barrage, but he's got too many hit points to burn through. Betty steps forward to the black shield, and this is just feeling donezo. Flash Wolves have got one Nexus turret left. The banner, uh, Baron empowered minions, excuse me. Come on, Slay, give me that pentakill. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be magnificent if it does, but I'm not quite a believer, Deficio. Oh, because they actually chased for the kills right there, wanted to better KDAs. They did not manage to finish the last turret. All the minions died around them. I think they're gonna be okay with yeah. it, uh, despite only getting that one bot lane in it. Can just walk down, spend the gold, and then get ready for next one. Betty, the only one who did not recall. Having a, a little bit of fun, I think, with it at the end. I mean, they could have closed out yeah. the game pretty easily there, but as you say, going for a bit more kills, a little bit more action, and they are so ridiculously fed. <laughs> you know, 15,000 gold ahead. I mean, this is just the items. When you're looking across and you're comparing, it's it's disgusting. You look at GP in the top lane; he has three completed items to to one. Yep. Right? You know that yep. feels uh, pretty rough. That feels pretty bad, man. Is how that feels. Yi Jin <laughs> gonna be jumped on by Mujin. There's no impale yet, but Mujin could consider chasing with that righteous glory. Decides against it for now. Instead, that's because Warzone is in the wrong neighborhood. To push. We've seen this on before. Yeah. How does it end? He dies. Okay. And Betty gets the kill. No. Nope. Uh, so you like you haven't seen that one before. That's true. It's true. I saw the one with Betty. Uh, with I pretty, like that one more. Um, my math is a little off, but this is pretty close to 0.8 combined kills per minute. Is that right? So, by VCS standards, Evos going to find themselves some damage onto Hanabi, but he's going to survive thanks to all of the itemization, the huge lead he's been able to accrue for himself. Slay gets dropped down at 50%. Here comes Mujin. He's already used that Righteous Glory. Rono P forced to use the Cleanse. Get caught by Dark Binding. And despite the Grey Health, will get killed by Maple. 11 0 4. If we had MSI Fantasy, he would be killing it right now. Yeah, well, definitely uh, making some more fans for himself, showing again how good Maple really is. Completely dominant in this game. Yeah, not fans of the VCS though, but no. uh, the rest of the world will definitely be pretty impressed. That's a flash chain of corruption. The final push should be on the cards. And Pale comes out. Warzone just respawned, man. And he's taken down for the sixth time. After 27 minutes and 22 kills, Flash Wolves obliterate Evos Esports. Very one sided game. All started around the Raptor camp, funny enough. That's where he lost the first Flash on the side of Yijin. That's where he died. And of course, then we saw the good roams from Maple. And it's good to see, of course, that Maple, a man who did struggle last year, 
He's been playing really well this year in the LMS, and then the first game he gets to play here in the group stages, he just absolutely destroys everyone. Great draft, great execution. Yeah, I mean, Maple was everywhere, down to the bottom lane for the early kills there. He's the one who forces the juggler's flash, then up to the top side, you know, getting a kill on Stark. He was pressuring the map incredibly well, while staying even or, or ahead, oftentimes, in his lane. And, and I definitely think this is, is a one to feel good about for Flash Force. It absolutely is. And on the other end, I'm disappointed in you, boss. Of course. Um, you know, you, you see the guys play all the way through uh, uh, the, the bracket stage, where they took out Supermassive, and those were some messy games. But there's a little bit more heads up, a little bit more control to it. And, and I, I think for, for EVOS to succeed in the, the next nine games that they have, they need to temper some of that decision making. Well, or they need to draft like extremely aggressive yeah. so that they have a lot of lanes that are winning, that can get 2v2 kills, that can set up something for Yijin. Because this one was a tank top and then a very slow scaling bot lane on their side. So it kind of looked like, okay, you could maybe go for the GP, but it was never going to be an easy tower dive, and they only succeeded once with it. And they first picked this Karsix pick that then ends up being really useless uh, in the game. So I think they can make some changes if they want to try and go in and play super fast and super yes. aggressive. I think there's too much scaling then suddenly. Not that I'm blaming the draft for losing this. No, I know it's just execution. one of those ideas. Right? It's just one pure those execution. Uh, just on screen a moment or two ago, Sword Art, exceptionally happy after that game, and why not? Flash Wolves took it. When we return, Sharks will actually check in with Sword Art before we look closer at how Team Liquid can beat Kings.